And now, of course, uh, these countries, the biggest countries, China, Brad, the BRICS, they're moving away from the dollar. So the dollar loses world reserve currency status, which is obviously very detrimental to <clears throat> the United States economy. But again, nobody seems to be talking about that really in earnest or seriously or what it all means and how this impacts people's uh, lives. The sense I'm getting and looking at social media, and et cetera, is that people are genuinely panicked at this point, that the authoritarianism has been turned up to 11. Like there's no coming back at this point. They're really going down this path that historically we know always ends tragically for anyone who tries to do it. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Crypto. In today's video, Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert of the Orange Pill podcast delve into the weakening of America's position as a global powerhouse due to other nations ditching the US dollar and opting for their own currencies in exchange activities. According to Kaiser, the US is leaning towards authoritarianism in an effort to regain control, as people become more mistrustful of major institutions such as banks. Kaiser views El Salvador as a refuge from the chaos created by fiat currencies, and believes that Bitcoin can provide an escape from the lunacy dominating global affairs. Let's hear Max and Stacy's views on the topic as they discuss the recent steps taken by the government in a bid to reclaim its power. But before we do, please consider subscribing to our channel as we bring you daily content on the latest crypto news. And now, let's jump right into the video. Okay, we mentioned that um, the mainstream media and all the institutions like Moody's, Fitch, um, the elite media of the United States, they totally missed the collapse of all their friends like Sam Bankman free their Ponzi schemes, all the New York regulated entities like Gemini and Genesis, they collapsed, right? So they missed all of that because they kept on pointing at us because we were succeeding here in El Salvador, right? Well, the banks are falling apart in the United States, right? By the way, uh, while the banks are collapsing, have all of those financial media or the Fitch or the Moody's of the world apologize to El Salvador? We didn't go um, default on our debts. Oh, we didn't go bankrupt. We didn't go bust. We didn't have chaos. We didn't have any of that here. No, it was there in the heart of New York City and the heart of Sa Silicon Valley and the heart of Frankfurt and Switzerland and Geneva and all that sort of stuff. All of their banks are falling apart. All of their schemes are collapsing. They're the ones that were projecting onto us all of their own fraud. They were projecting onto us we have become the safe haven which is amazing because even a year ago we were considered to be the murder capital of the world now it's el salvador the safe haven the safest country in the americas safer than even canada probably safer than most disneyland parks uh, as somebody said to just today they said hey, you guys saw into the future and now the everyone's catching up to what you saw you know yeah. it's kind of true so when President Bukele made Bitcoin legal tender. You know, we caught our attention and within a few months we moved here. And uh, everything that's happened since then has just compounded this this hyper Bitcoinization and the orange pilling that's been going on here. And now folks, after a year or so in the US and other locations, they're really starting to run out of patience. They don't see things improving in the US or other locations around the world. And they see that things have radically improved here. So there's really, I put a poll up on Twitter. So the idea was, at what point does the migrant flow in uh, between El Salvador and the U.S. reverse? So in other words, at what point did we go from net um, leaving, you know, migrants leaving to net net migrants arriving? And this would be the Canadians and the Americans and the Europeans and the Asians who are coming to to take advantage of, of El Salvador. And the choices were three months, six months, nine months and 12 months. I, I checked a few, uh, you'd be a little bit before, and I think 40% said maybe 12 months. But I think this is an interesting metric. We've been warning you for a few years, not only about the coming financial collapse and the monetary collapse, but we've been pointing out the obvious in terms of the US dollar, uh, you know, is the global reserve currency or has been for the past few decades. And we, pointed out the warning signs that they're trying to, they're basically rugging the whole world. <laughs> Interestingly, because um, it's an interesting way of operating and it's an interesting policy. I don't know what their end goal is there to blow it up. 
let's see how that goes. Nevertheless, they seem to be doing it. Um, we've been warning you about, you know, this um, uh, emerging authoritarian surveillance state in the United States. They, they want to disintegrate the um, you know, your conception of truth. They, they want no truth except for the truth that they tell you that moment is their truth. Um, and this is happening faster and faster and it's disintegrating faster. So we've seen over the past, well, in the past day, we've seen a, a settlement in, um, of, of some oil traded in UN. That's what we, I was going to mention. We see, we see Saudi Arabia joining BRICS. We see yep. um, the, the disintegration of that petrodollar system. Speak on it. We see also in the United States that they want to introduce this ban on TikTok. And in order to ban TikTok, then they have to ban an entire segment of free speech. Tell the and, people. And also say that, you know, Americans or I guess anybody under the authority of some new ministry that they're going to create or some new position position will have some sort of power uh, to throw you in prison for 20 years and fine you a million dollars for using a VPN. Like, you know, it's, it's just, it's just like, what the hell is happening so fast? So liquefied natural gas, I think is the contract that's being settled in Twan between Russia, China. So, um, so that's the first point. So all of the uh, post World War II dollar based trade, you know, after World War II, they went Bretton Woods and Bretton Woods made everything based on the dollar. Everything had to use the dollar. Everyone wanted to trade oil and gas and had to use the dollar. And now, of course, uh, these countries, the biggest countries, China, Brad, the BRICS, they're moving away from the dollar. So the dollar loses world reserve currency status, which is obviously very detrimental to <clears throat> the United States economy. But again, nobody seems to be talking about that really in earnest or seriously or what it all means and how this impacts people's uh, lives. And it's obviously inflationary. The inflation is not transitory because the breakdown <laughs> in, in the way the global economy is occurring outside of of US dollar as the world reserve currency means that the client states of the of America, which means every country that's not America, is going to start charging more <laughs> for their stuff because they don't want dollars, right? It's very simple. Like we don't want dollars. So uh, it's going to cost more or give us more dollars. It, it, we, already, we don't want it. So that's inflation's now intractable. Inflation's now systemically built in going forward. And that means quality of life is going to go down. It's axiomatically true that quality of life will go down. And there's no way that the GDP will ever, ever, ever rise to any equation where paying off deficit becomes a reality. So that's only going to grow exponentially. So on the point of authoritarianism, you know, Okay, why it seems like the policymakers are for reaching for solutions, they've given up trying to solve things economically. So they're going into a box called authoritarianism, mm -hmm. right? That's where they're looking for the solutions. Uh, with this new uh, passage of a new law, I guess, where um, you can get uh, criminalization of using a VPN and this, uh, this advanced surveillance state approach and authoritarianism. So again, um, Stacy, explain to me if you had two boxes in front of you, one was we're going to rely on entrepreneurialism and American can doism, and here we're going to go to authoritarianism. Why are they picking the authoritarian box? Explain this to me. I think the authoritarian thing usually happens when um, a, a very powerful group of people very suddenly lose authority because it's like hyperinflation, right? Hyperinflation is a political event whereby people lose faith in the currency. It's not just too much money printing, which causes inflation. It's like immediate collapse of your currency. Well, they suffered an immediate collapse of their, um, of people's trust in these institutions, which is this party, which is the, the entire apparatus of the democratic elite uh, ruling party. You know, the thing is, we appear to have gone through the authoritarian looking glass, you know, like we've gone through a portal like um, I, how like I think at the sense I'm getting and looking at social media and et cetera, is that people are genuinely panicked at this point that the authoritarianism has been turned up to 11. Like there's no coming back at this point. They're really going down this path that historically we know always ends tragically for anyone who tries to do it. Uh, and there doesn't seem to be any walking it back. Um, and the political landscape seems rife for continued, uh, as The Economist magazine likes to call it, uh, a social cohesion risk 
is how they refer to mass rioting on the street. Kaiser has pointed out that the supremacy of the US dollar as a default reserve currency is decreasing. With more and more countries using other currencies to make international transactions, it can be argued that we may be heading towards a financial reset. What do you feel about this? Do you think it's possible? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. This is Let's Talk Crypto and we'll see you in the next video.